TNTM The Show presents Comicast with your host, Pablo Gunner, and my guest, Mindy Wheeler. Mindy Wheeler, and for your Kickstarter comic, we're here to talk about your Kickstarter comic. Is it B-O-B-S number one, or is it boobs number one? <laughs> Oh, it's boobs number one. No mistake. <laughs> but they are capitalized. Well, I mean, yeah, you could use it either way. I just like to capitalize it because it's so just obnoxious. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I mean, it, it depends on the situation, but I, I, I'm assuming in this situation it is, right? Uh, yeah, it's it's boobs number one, and it's it's lots of fun. It's a okay. blast. That's the name of the comic is, is boobs, and it's issue number one. So issue number two will come out later this year, and... So on and so forth. From what I've read, you already have issue one done. And okay. issue two. And issue two. See, that's crazy. Because you, I feel like most of the time, you're waiting a long time for these things to be done. You already got two done. You're already like on a great roll. Well, yeah, I'm hoping that, yeah, the way I've planned it is that I can hopefully, I don't have issue three done. Mm. But because I have issue one and two, I kind of plan to release it after I had those done so that I could work on issue three this year. So then hopefully I can like follow that up right away too with, with issue three. And then if I'm fast enough, I can continually like, as I'm releasing issue three, I'll work on issue four and then I'll hopefully be able to like have an ongoing series pretty timely. We'll see. That's what I'm hoping for. That was the plan. Okay. Awesome. So before I get, to, before we get too deep into this, where can we find this? Obviously Kickstarter, but I don't know if there's any other projects with a similar name. So <laughs> Uh, is there like a specific like link and, and everything that we can go to the best places to find it? Just Kickstarter. I mean, just Kickstarter. You can go to Kickstarter and search for boobs. And um, it's usually the second result. There's a couple other like uh, crochet, uh, you know, hacky sack boobs. And then maybe like some other breast cancer awareness thing. There's not too many, but it's the only comic book I know of with that name. Okay, awesome. What is this comic book about, I guess, more specifically? <laughs> besides the obvious right yeah. uh yes yeah, so it, it's a comedy it's a parody it's okay. a bit satirical in nature so it, it pokes fun at a lot of things a lot of humor a lot of funny jokes it's about a cosplayer the tagline the official little what's it called elevator pitch is that she's a very attractive cosplayer uh, who can't help herself but get into trouble despite her enormous assets so it follows her around the convention scene, and I'd say it's pretty unexpected in the writing that, you know, people will have to read it and follow and see what it's all about, but there's lots of fun to be had. Okay, awesome. Just from what from what I saw, it, it looks fun, and it, it looks like a good time. <laughs> I love the wording, too, and the phrasing uh, and all this stuff. Like, it is hilarious. So, like, if there's stuff like that in the books, like, it's it's – it's a good time. Oh, yeah. It, it's that, but, like, turned up to 100%. So I'm having so much fun writing it. Like, I, I it's, it's fun to take the most silly thing and be the most creative I can with it. Because I get to, like, explore anything at all to do with boobs in any way that I can think of. And it's just, it's a blast. So, yeah, I, it is a lot of fun. It is exactly that <laughs> in a girdle. <laughs> awesome. So I watched the video, and it said... Dropping on uh, on April 1st, and I was like, so is this an April Fool's joke? <laughs> yeah, I figure people might be thrown off a little bit like that, but then it causes you to question and maybe look it up, maybe, <laughs> to yeah. see if it's real. Uh, yeah, I did that just the timing, just because it is that, that spirit of fun. And uh, this is the most fun I've ever had in comics, so I I think it was well worth it. And I, I planned it to just end right after um, Free Comic Book Day. So there's a comic shop I'll probably go hang out at on that day, and then that's the last day, and then it'll be over. Okay, awesome. When does this campaign end? Yep, May 6th. Okay. All right, cool. So, and and how is the funding going on on all the on everything? Great, uh, way better than I anticipated. I think we're at seventeen five, roughly. I mean, I was I was actually really nervous because I had no idea what was going to happen. <laughs> it could it could be really great. It could be a flop. I I was not sure exactly how people were, would respond, but they've been awesome. So it's at it's at seventeen thousand, uh, climbing upwards to eighteen thousand now. We've hit three stretch goals, done one giveaway for three hundred pack backers. <clears throat> so I'm hoping to hit that twenty thousand stretch goal before the six. That's only in thirteen days from now. Okay, awesome. So what was like just the beginning 
funding? Like, what were what was the goal at first? Oh, uh, five hundred bucks. Really? No. Yeah. Way. Well, I mean, I'd already done the art. You know, that helps a bunch, right? And and I I wanted to release this book, so this was like a fundraiser book, kind of like a fun uh, idea that we had about two and a half years ago, my husband and I. And then um, I I was working with a retailer and funding with that fell through. So I was kind of left with this book. Like I was going the whole traditional route where I would like hire out the work and then all the funding fell through really. There wasn't really any left and I had already put all the work into it. So I ended up taking that burden on myself and I just ended up drawing it all, uh, writing it all with my husband, lettering it all, flatting it all, coloring it all. And since then, I've condensed the process. Now I do it on uh, Procreate. It's all digital. So I color and draw at the same time. I don't have to pencil, ink, flat, color. So it's faster. But I had a baby in that time. And now here we are. Funding happened. The The overhead is done now, right? Because I, now I don't have to hire it out. So it's just done. So it's just the printing, like the initial print run that I was funding with that goal. And uh, there's a lot of surprises that I'm going to still, I still have two surprises I want to sneak in this campaign, but I had no idea, you know, how much funding it was going to get. So I didn't go as out as I could have done. I could have done hollow foil covers. I could have done this and that. So the next campaign, I'm going to really even ramp it up even more, but that's why the 500 funding goal. And we hit that in, I think it was 30 minutes. Wow. That's that's great. What was the first stretch goal? Uh, the first stretch goal was the trading card. It's a collectible trading card. Okay. And it's got back and front. All right, sweet. And uh, what, what was the amount for that one? So I did like 5, 10, and 15, I think, were my first three stretch goals. Then we had a, we had a collectible trading goal or trading card on the first one. And then I did a sticker, which is a bra support sticker. Um, because Frank, he's the founder of the bras. It's like, it's the following that reads the book that are being super supportive. Yeah. Five, 10 and 15. And they call themselves the bras, the bros reading and supporting boobs or babes, babes reading and supporting boobs. So they got a little support sticker with a little uplifting bra. <laughs> and, and then the 15 K stretch goal was a digital behind the scenes coloring book. Okay, sweet. Sweet, sweet yeah. deal. That's awesome. What's the next stretch goal you said? Uh, 20,000. I have not announced it yet. I have, okay. I've, there are, well, I don't have it behind me. There is a funny gag gift I've made of two silicone boobs <laughs> that are about this big, but I don't know if it'll work as a stretch goal. I've been working on it for like a week, building the mold, pouring the mold and like slaving away, like breaking boob over a bunch of containers <laughs> i don't know if it'll work as a stretch goal i'm still working out the kinks like it's actually one side is a little heavy so they kind of like fly. so i but i will probably do it as a giveaway and so i'm i'm organizing the stretch goals i haven't announced the 20k one yet it's either that or it's going to be something else okay cool before i forget i thought i would ask so have you gone to conventions with this oh, book? not with this book. No, I used to go to conventions all the time and share my art. And here, this is some of my old stuff. Oh, and we, I just gave away the bunch of metal trading cards for the 300th backer. But yeah, I used to go to shows all the time. Um, but I had, I've had two more kids since then. So it's really slowed down plus COVID and that whole era. Right. So I stopped going to shows in about 2017, I think was my last show, but I, I did it for a couple of years and I would, you know, sell this stuff and it was a blast. I went all over the country, but for this book, I haven't yet. I may, I may in the future soon enough. Okay. So I'm just curious, like what cosplayers, cause I felt like there's always cosplayers at conventions. So I go like, I wonder what the cosplayers think about this, about this project, this, this book, <laughs> this series. Yeah. I don't know. It, if you're talking about cosplayers, quite a few people have uh, mentioned Kara Nicole. And I know Kara. I, I mean, I haven't spoken to her in years, but I did know her. I uh, ran into her a few times in Arizona and her husband, Alfred. And um, they were very nice people, super nice people. So I, I've reached out to her. I don't think she's seen. She's pro she's very busy, I'm sure. But they have said, is this book about Kara? Like, does she look <laughs> like the character? I said, no, it's not. It's That's a coincidence. But I have no idea how else anyone would receive it. I'd be I'd be curious to see Kara's reaction if she would ever do a cover or something with us one day, a cosplay cover. That would be tight. Yeah, I feel like this would be like the perfect thing to team up with cosplayers for. You know, yeah. just like 
they, they, they probably can relate to, you know, some of the stuff maybe. And, and, and just because of, you know, all of it really, you know, so. That's a good idea. I should probably reach out then for the, for at least the second issue and see if I can uh, nail down a cool cosplay cover. I know those are really popular, but I, it's, I've been out of the convention scene. I don't know any cosplayers, you know, personally. So if you have any recommendations, feel free to send them my way. Oh yeah, for sure. For sure. Definitely. I like, we follow all kinds. So and there's so many, but how much do you have to put down to, to get this comic? I think the, well, you could do a digital PDF okay. if you wanted to just start with that. I think that's about 10 bucks. Okay. And then the covers start at 20, uh -huh. 20 and, so, and then up in there. And then, so like, what are the perks to like the more you put in? Oh boy. I've built a whole bunch of different, um, like, okay. So there's three different uh, sort of themes, if you will. Mm -hmm. I put a lot of work into these graphics. I spent, I spent days. <laughs> I think I redid them about four times too, until I was absolutely happy. There's different kinds of themes. So there's a beach babe theme where, uh, and it's part of the story. Uh, I've already released the first seven pages. I did that like a year ago of um, Song Chai, the, the main, uh, one of the main characters besides boobs, he's her sidekick, uh, basically. Uh, he's a funny character in himself, but it opens up and he's on the beach and he's okay. like, oh man, I wish I wish I had more beer and women. And then this woman just sort of like magically pops out of the water, like kind of like mermaid-ish and she's got beer and she's all, Sunshine, I heard your wish, you know, and, and it goes from there. So besides the the boobs theme and she's kind of cosplaying as like a super girl kind of costume. And she's got like this Superman to play on the exposed chest. So there's those two themes that the sort of swimsuit edition, if you will, with the beach babes, I call them, or the uh, Supergirl. So there's uh, different tiers for that. There's a, a beach babe edition with the beach babes on it. And they're, they've got this big old mega pint of beer in between all of them. <laughs> so it's a, there's a beach babe mega pint edition. And then there's the upgrade for that. And in every uh, theme, there's either the book or there's a book in the print as the upgrade, or you can do like the mega upgrade with just the book, the print, and then um, a metal print and a sticker. So you've got the beach babes, you've got a sirens where they're all kind of like cool with the water all rising up. And then you've got the three tiers of those, the book, the book in the print, the book in the metal print, the other print and the sticker. I've got the super babe, same thing. And there's a pinup one of there where she's, uh, it's like the super girl naughty cover where she's in the iconic super, uh, man pose and then the pinup edition where she's got a little bit more of a pinup style and then uh, you could get the whole shebang too with the metal print the art piece the book and the sticker same there with it with a little bit of variation on the art on that one too there's an, a third art piece in there where it, she's looking up and it says it's a boob it's a babe it's super babe you know and then the last one there is a sketch card edition where some chai is surrounded by the beach babes with the beer and you get a Beach Babe original sketch with that. So those are the kind of themes. And then if you want to do like the Booba Palooza, uh, that's everything, all of the covers, all of the prints, or the Big Boob Special, which is the main cover with the Superman sort of looking thing, and then all the art prints. Awesome. Sweet. Yeah. I mean, it looks like uh, there's a lot of choices. There's a lot of options. There's a lot of goodies to, to be had out there. So it's it seems interesting. So is there is there like a a story or character arc going on in this series? Oh yeah, oh yeah. It's it's not just all um what's the word shallow. Uh, it, it's definitely like a bit of slapstick comedy. But mm. I've actually like really enjoyed spending the last two and a half years really pouring into the story and making it like a good story. So although it's it's got the most superficial is the word it's got the most superficial title in the world uh actually have a lot of character developments going on here so and the first issue um the first and second issue the reason i ended up completing them both is because they were meant to be one issue when mm -hmm. we first wrote it and then i got so into the character development and i started thinking oh man i i want to add this and i want to add this and i started really developing the story out of that so it it expanded into two issues and, you know, it's got the whole, it's about an eight issue story arc and, you know, it's got the hook, it's got the inciting events and the characters, protagonist, antagonist, it's got all that in it. Okay. Interesting. Awesome. I love that stuff. So that, so that's getting me hooked there, right? So myself, <laughs> you know, I'm like, okay, all the, the juicy stuff. So that's, that's good stuff. Where, what are you, what socials are you on um, the most? 
like where we can check out your work and then we can follow you and stuff? Instagram or Facebook. I have a Twitter too. I guess I use them all about equally as much. Facebook, I was just Mindy Wheeler Art. And then uh, Instagram is the same. Twitter is the same. So I, I think um, if I'm going to personally choose, I like Instagram because mm-hmm. I like the visuals and you can just see all the art. You know, that's easy enough. But Facebook is also, I got a, the biggest following on Facebook. So maybe that helps. Yeah, same here. I don't know. It's, it's like Facebook seems like it's easiest to get high numbers. Don't know how many people see stuff. But uh, but yeah, and then and then Instagram is, it seems like Insta- Instagram really is the best for artists because that's what it features. There are the best. It's pictures, you know, and that's what it focuses on. So it's the best for that. Whereas I, I feel like Twitter's, twi- Twitter's best for kind of like business. It's been a little more difficult since since Elon's taken over, but you know, <laughs> what do you get? <laughs> yeah, Twitter, I think is more about words. And because I have, you know, sketches of girls in swimsuits lately, especially with the word boobs, they've been kind of censoring my art, like just they'll hide it and say it may have content. So I'm kind of bummed about that because people can't really see my art. So it's more just about words. So if I'm going to go with an, if you're like to look at art, I agree with you there. I think Instagram is the biggest one. I think I didn't give it enough attention, that the attention it deserved over the past couple of years. I think it really is kind of the hot spot. So I've been putting more effort into it lately. That's good. So you've been in the business nine years. What have you done? Like what other works have you done? Other projects, other companies that you worked for? Uh, going now chronologically from now until, you know, backwards. The, the piece I did before this was a dynamite cover of Vampirella. So that was that was the year of COVID actually. And so that was kind of tricky because all the printers were closed and everything. That was fun. And I feel like a lot of people found me through that cover. Uh, they liked the art and, and so I enjoyed doing that. That was for her 50th anniversary. It was right around there. That, so it was like a 50th anniversary cover. Before that, probably Zenoscope would have been chronological order. I did a couple pieces for Grimm's Fairy Tales pinups and things like that the queen of heart i don't remember the other characters names a couple work with them i worked with oh rothic the divinica cover with sabine rich and don mcteague and help them color that book and and such ultra pro you know them mostly by their cards so i did a deck with ultra pro counterpoint i did a do you poo cover zenoscope oh i said zenoscope yeah that's that's about it so like kind of here and there and i've colored i started as a colorist so like I colored a Jason Metcalf piece, a Jamie Tyndall piece, e bass stuff for Divinica, Don McTeague, um, kind of around the Zenoscope people. But but then I got busy with my kids. I kind of dropped out of it for a while, and and there was a lot of political just like nonsense in the industry too. So I I kind of just bowed out for a bit. And so now I'm back and minding my own business. It seems I I actually just really enjoy working by myself more than anything. I I just find that the most fun is just working on my own stuff. It's been cool to start as a colorist and then like go full circle to be where I wanted to be because I really admired the people I started coming for like, wow, how can I be where you are? And now it's been nine years. Yeah, I've seen I've interviews with Jim Lee, and he's like, yeah, it took me 10 years, right, to, like, get where I wanted to be, and I feel like I'm kind of approaching that mark now, being nine years that I'm coming out with my own book now. It's all my own work. I've come out with a sketchbook before this, but it didn't have a story. It was just sketches, you know, so I'm really proud of this. I guess I'll say I'm really, I feel accomplished, <laughs> and to have issue number two also, and then issue number three, like I'm feeling like I've really risen as an artist through a lot of difficult periods of like, I think I can, I think I can. It's because it, it does take many years, I think, to grow. And so I, I finally feel like I'm getting somewhere <laughs> after nine years. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. I mean, it, if if that is your art behind you, mm-hmm. I, it's pretty killer. But how how was the, how is that process different? Like being, working for these bigger companies. I mean, I know those ones are kind of indie, but in comparison to to running your own show and doing doing things exactly the way that you want to. Oh, yeah, I just I just much prefer working by myself. I inter- sort of like interviewed, it's like a portfolio review with Marvel at, at San Diego a few years ago, but it's been real weird too. The industry has like gone through so many ups and downs too. It's been really like under not very dependable. And I know Marvel that like the next year they pulled out of San Diego and they weren't even hiring people anymore. And they started all outsourcing all their work instead. And like talking to the other 
artists, they're all the, that did work for larger companies, their, their contracts, their rates were lowering. So like, right as I was feeling like I was getting a little push, I kind of actually kind of backed out and was like, you know, this is kind of a up and down industry. It seems like a lot of people are having trouble. A lot of people are losing their work to outsourcing or their page rates are dropping. So, and I had also had issues myself with like, I won't even talk about that, but, but there have been a couple of issues I've had with like the industry and how it operates. I come from a long background of uh, like management, marketing and sales and operations, HR. So I've done like everything under the sun in an office environment for many years. So I am really structured and I like structure and I like deadlines. And sometimes people in this industry just at large, like they don't like, they're not used to that and they don't like deadlines and, or that, I don't know. I just, I, I'm picky. And so I really like doing things my own way. And, it, and since I've done that, it feels like freedom. Like, why would I ever want to go work for someone else now that I have this taste of like how beautiful it is to just like have this idea and put it on paper and it's mine. If I want to change it, okay. Like there's no one to answer to. So it it feels like freedom. So I I will probably never go ever back to working for anybody else anymore. If it just, whether I had the best experience or the worst experience, doesn't even matter. I've had the experience of working on my own stuff now. So I don't think I'll ever go back. That, yeah, that's that's really awesome. That's really good to hear. Uh, it, it seems like that's that's kind of what I'm hearing from a few creators is that it, it's difficult to work. And, and especially with like the pandemic, like it was a similar situation with us. We're like, we, you know, we go to conventions, we make videos, we chat with people and stuff. And then COVID hit and it was like, well, every, it was like quarantine. And so it's like, okay, that, well, that kind of killed us. And then, so it made things harder mm-hmm. to get work done. And, and so it's like, now we're just starting to get back into business. Yeah, totally. It was the same thing with conventions too. I was going to conventions and then like shows were being bought out by really big shows that totally changed how things were done. And then all of a sudden shows that were great were not great. You know, it was really like flip floppy. And so for a while there, I was like, I can't really depend on making a living. And I was uh, about to have a baby. So I actually left and started truck driving and was like, yeah, I'm like, I got to do something else for money. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. But we had a similar situation too. It's like, well, the, and we had a baby right before like the quarantine and, and before COVID exploded. So it was, so we we're just like lockdown mode, you know, got to make sure the babies are all good to go and your baby and then had another one a couple of years later. So I, I know somewhat a tad probably of, of what you've gone through. So that's really cool. But you know what? It, it's really neat. And it's good to, to, to hear too, that you're, you're really good with deadlines because I feel like, just like you said, a lot of uh, artists, writers, even like, cause I, I suck at deadlines. Like I try to put deadlines on myself for writing my own stuff and I, and I'm, and I'm awful at it. And, and I, I can't imagine putting those deadlines on artists because I feel like that's way more work. So I go like, how, if I can't put deadlines on myself and keep to them, like, how am I going to do that with an artist? But because you have that structure, it's so great to hear that because so many Kickstarter projects, I feel like they'll be like, oh, this is what we want. And then you, it'll be years before you get like the actual thing that you signed up for. And you're like, I've lost interest. I don't even know what this is. You know what I mean? Like I, I forgot about this or the updates you get are so rare, you know? Oh, we did this. Yeah. It's good that, that those people, like they have successes, like they're doing more mainstream stuff. But when you focus on that one thing, like, you know, that's going to be quality and you know, it's going to be done in a timely manner, which is sounds like what you're delivering. I have to just agree with you on all those points. And I, that's why I've waited. <clears throat> I could have released the book about a year ago. But then, you know, I started reaching out because like I said, I did, I, we did like have a fundraiser for the book a long time ago, but it was, it was also a fundraiser for a website, crowdfunding, that name, that word escapes me for some reason, (laughs) for crowdfunding, um, like for a website apart from Kickstarter. So that was that book. It was a venture of my husband's and I, again, we're very creative people, but like, I feel like we haven't channeled our creativity in the right direction until now. Now we like, I finally get it. But we've been trying to like uplift the indie scene for a while, um, especially because we have had or I have seen bad experiences uh, with the big two from from creators and, and just all publishers. So <laughs> we were trying to like help give artists a little bit more freedom. Like I said, the funding fell through for this book then because that retailer pulled out. Like, that whole experience was like kind of a bummer. Be- but I was talking to a lot of indie creators at the time because it was like, let's let's like start doing our own stuff. We'll get we'll get indie creators uh, together with retailers and we'll see what happens. 
but what I didn't realize was that most, I guess is the right word, indie creators are like, are not dependable. <laughs> but I did, and I actually very, uh, very vicious and nasty as well. So I did not know that. I did not expect that. That was a bummer. And I hear from fans now, like what you just said, that you like deadlines, you see the deadline potential of this book. And I appreciate that because I hear fans that appreciate that too. They say the same thing. They're like, I back this book. The creator just ghosts me. They say I even paid for like this high, high tier and they just pretend I don't exist or they'll block me wow. on social media. So it's like, I feel like a lot of scammers even maybe came out on the scene and people uh just kind of like got abused by creators at that period of time I, i'm glad i waited actually to launch this book because that whole phase where it was like people were really disenfranchised with the big two there was a lot of stuff going on there was covid then a bunch of creators came on the scene and then actually didn't deliver and and kind of abused their fan base and beat them up even more, a fan base that was just like already feeling beat up and kind of like now here we are. And so I'm kind of like, Ooh, okay, that was, that's behind me now. So I guess I don't have to deal with any of that. Whew. Um, and now here I am with this book and I'm like, this is a great time to release this because I've spent two year, two and a half years preparing, doing it just like I did my old marketing jobs. And that feels good because my old job got replaced by robots. That's why I had to go into truck driving. Like, I've been replaced by robots like twice. Uh, you know, <laughs> it's true. Well, you, all the marketing directors and newspaper ads, we got replaced by the, not just outsourcing, but you can even create your own website by talking to a robot now. I forget her name. And she'll like, you know, I used to build websites and we all got replaced by Facebook business pages. And so that's already happened to me. Uh, <laughs> but now it's like, I'm doing my old job again that I used to love. I used to love marketing, but I'm doing it that and combined with art. So I'm like, yes, this is like what I'm meant to be doing. Like, I feel like I'm really meant to be doing this at this time. I'm setting up spreadsheets and I got my little, you know, cost analysis. And I'm like, yeah, you know, I got my vendors and I'm working with. It's awesome. So I'm having a blast. But I do feel bad for that period of time. Kept in contact with all of the people. There was only like maybe, you know, 25, 30 people that we were involved with. And a lot of them actually have been following me for like the whole nine years. So they know what's going on with the book. And I was like, hey, the funding fell through. What do you guys feel about this? And I could have released it, you know, like a year or so ago. But then I was like, hey, I have a really good idea to expand it. Do you want this book now or do you want it to be the best it could be? And then I split it into two issues. That's what I did. So now I've completed 70 pages. It was going to be like a, you know, a 26 page, 30 page, but then it just kept growing. So now like everybody's happy. Everybody's cool. All those people I still talk with. I, I really haven't had any bad experiences. And I think we're all having a, a really good time deadline. That was my issue with the publishers. I won't say like. I, I don't, I don't get in the business of talking smack about people. So I won't say who uh, names don't matter, but, but I actually did have a, a big issue with working with publishers because there was a lack of deadlines, even in publishing. So not just the indie creators, it's, it's like everywhere in wow. comics. It was a lack of deadlines that made me mad because working as a graphic designer and a marketer, like I need my project explained. And then if you give me a page and then say, oh, we forgot, change the lighting entirely, redo these pages. You know, and that, that would happen to me like three times over, like I'd color pages for people. And then they'd be like, oh, we totally forgot. We don't have a deadline. We're just throwing this together. Can you like redo this again? And it happened, like I did a page like three or four times over once and the stuff like that. Like I can't, li I can't build an income on that. Right. That's why I left. That's why I I'm going into trucking. Bye. Cause I can't, I can't depend on it. And then other times it'd be like, oh, we don't have a deadline, but our, but we're supposed to submit this in two weeks. So just throw something together. And it's That's like, wait, crazy. what? <laughs> I, I say, wait, no, no, no. You're supposed to give me a script. Oh, we don't have a script. Just put something on paper. It's like, oh, okay. So yeah, like I said, no names are needed. I work for a whole sl sleuth of publishers. It could be any one of them, but um, stuff like that. It, I just wasn't, I was disenfranchised as a creator. I feel you guys also having issues as fans too. It happened to other creators too. We were all kind of bummed with the lack of integrity <laughs> all around us. Yeah, that's wild. Uh, it's crazy. It's crazy to hear that, especially like with the indie publishers, you know, because I mean, you cut like you, you've seen the stuff with the big publishers where it seems like unless you're a big name already, they don't want to have anything to do with you. Like you have to have your own books published your own stuff done. Like you already have to have experience. It's like that whole thing where they go, well, you got to have experience, but you know, if you don't have experience, we're not going to hire you. And you're like, well, if someone would hire me, I could have experience, but no one wants to hire, you know? And you're like, 
Come on. That's so. exactly it. Exactly. Like you just described it to a T. Yes, I was having that same problem. And that was where a lot of the outsourcing issue was coming in. Around like That was around like 2016-ish when that whole era started in 17. And you talk to like industry veterans that have been in this for a long time at shows. And I remember talking to, I think it was Jim Shooter. And we were talking about the, the hiring process for a lot of these companies. And, he, and it's basically like, who has the most likes on Instagram gets the job, whether they're better or not. And I had that issue when I, that one issue I talked about where I recolored the pages like three times, like that person got the job because I personally believe in my opinion, uh, because they had a bigger Instagram than me. So it wasn't merit-based. It wasn't skill-based. It was a lot of like nepotism and a lot of who has the best social media. And I thought that was a lack of, from the publishers, that mean I thought that meant that they were crappy publishers because publishers are supposed to uplift the people working for them like they're supposed to get the name by working for the publisher and the publisher pushes them out to their following it's like they got lazy and and that's the thing anybody can pay for instagram likes so they just said do our marketing for us you know come out of your pocket and we'll hire you if you have a big enough following even one publisher told me the way we'll hire you if you put out a really good story for free and you get basically internet famous and everybody loves you then we'll hire you i was like why would i spend all that energy putting out time of mine for free just to have you hire me so here I am. I did my own book. Here we go. So now I'm going to do that, but except I'm going to put it on Kickstarter and actually work for myself. There's no reason to put that out for free and then maybe get hired for a very low page rate. So that's all, that's all just nonsense to me, really. Yeah. It seems like that's even a thing like with casting in Hollywood. It's like, oh, this person's big. Let's, they may not be a better actor, but they, they have a lot of people following them. So we're going to get all those people to come see that movie just because of that. But speaking of Hollywood, so this makes me think of like, with all these ideas combined of you being a trucker and then this, this cosplayer story, I go like, are we going to get like a Sylvester Stallone style, like over the top of her, like trucking and going to conventions, you know, around you know, around uh, the country or the continent, you know, and then maybe take it over this overseas, you know, but uh, I just thought it was like a funny, it just like made me think of that weirdly. I, you know, there's a comic that I have in mind that would feature a female trucker just because I, I've been through it. So yeah, but that, that's more on a serious note. Being a trucker is hard work. It's not something that you have much fun at. So I have to admit when I was truck driving, I was, you know, in such a laughable mood for her. No, she, <laughs> I, I can't say her background story yet because it's a funny surprise. You'll you'll see. She she's very naive. It's, I'll say she's naive for a really good reason. And okay. and it's it's a funny it's a funny backstory. She's not a trucker, but she has been around the country. Okay, awesome. Yeah, actually, my mom was a trucker. She was trucker for a few for the last few years. Uh, different with a couple different companies. Yeah, and she, and she she liked seeing the country, but it she did say it was like it's a stressful job for sure. Oh yeah, it is. Yeah especially like snowstorms, 80,000 pounds up, up mountains. That's very, very stressful. Not, not everybody can do that. So kudos to your mom. I think most people don't want that job. <laughs> it's cool. It's cool, but it's also just, and, and long hours. I'm glad I'm not doing that anymore. <laughs> yeah. A lot, a lot of people wouldn't believe me when I would tell them, they're like, is, she, is your mom really a trucker? And I'll be like, yeah, she's an ice road trucker season three, but she doesn't make it to four. And <laughs> And then they definitely didn't believe me. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, that's that's uh, that's really awesome. So I'm I'm looking personally. I'm looking forward to this. This sounds like a really interesting project, a really cool thing. So this, so just to be clear, so this is just the campaign for issue one. Yes. But you already have two, and you're working on three. So you're going to be doing a separate campaign for each issue. So this is already a this. So this is a done deal. Like we're. We're golden. Like if we fund this, we're set. We don't oh, yeah. no worries at all. And even oh, two, yeah. like when we fund two. So when two comes out, then we have that to look forward to as well. Cause you go, Hey, we don't have to worry about this never getting to us. It's already finished. So to me, that sounds like, Hey, why wouldn't people fund this? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's the way I planned it as part of the, the appeal to me was like, I want to deliver something that people are going to make people happy and give the people what they want and what they want are books you know so give the people books <laughs> i have to stop myself if anything from adding more into the book because i think of things all the time and like oh that would be cool so i have to be like no mindy stop stop 
but there is one page of issue two where I'm like, man, I might want to just like pretty up this little page. Cause I, I just think of things all the time. I have too many ideas than time allows. I'll get there. That's been part of this campaign. The fun of it is people have like pitched me so many ideas and been like, can you add this? Can we do this? And, and they're so creative too. And they have so much fun with the concept that I've been adding all kinds of things like to the campaign. I did even add a smacked with a boob reward. You can be <laughs> on the page. So I will have to draw that person's likeness in there, you know, but yeah, you can, you can be drawn into the book too. There's, there's a lot of fun we're having, but most definitely your books are ready to go. The artwork is ready to go. People have been watching me for two years, you know, putting out the artwork too. So you can even look back at my social media profiles and see the artwork for issue two. Okay, you won't awesome. spoil the story, but you'll see the pages are done. Okay, awesome. I, I think people should go to Kickstarter, fund this project, and check out you on uh, on all your socials. You said what Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, mainly oh, yeah. Facebook, Instagram, right? Yeah, I'm on YouTube too. I don't really do okay. much with YouTube anymore. I used to, but I've been really thinking I should start a Twitch. That seems popular, but I'm yeah. not there yet. So yeah, <laughs> Facebook or Instagram, I'd say are the best ones. Is there anything else you wanted to share with us? Oh, you know what? I forgot to mention on my last podcast. So I'm having a little contest too. So I have too many ideas to uh, to just fit into stretch goals and giveaways. I also started a social media contest for the campaign. So if you go around and share your love of boobs online and just tag me so I know it's there, I'll enter you into this social media contest. It's set apart from Kickstarter because Kickstarter doesn't do contests. They don't allow that. So it's purely on social media. Find me, tag the boobs comic, hashtag boobs comic is easy enough. Do something about your love of boobs and you will enter the contest. And I got all kinds of goodie bags and things and the winner will get the boobies box the giant boobies box so i can i can send you the graphics for that could be anything could be interpretive dance i had one guy uh, well i've had a couple poems really awesome poems about boobs fan art so that's been fun too just anything we can do for fun on the side is cool with me this is a fun book meant for fun <laughs> for people to enjoy themselves awesome yeah once again that sounds like something that like i see art like sent to cosplayers all the time that's like you know, those kinds of things. So it's, it's like, that seems like it's, it just molds perfectly. Yep. That'd be cool. I really do not. I want to go look and see if I can find a cosplay for cover number two. That would be <laughs> sweet. Oh, there's even other artists too, that I've done the cover for issue two, uh, Justin Hunt and David Fott. I want to give them a shout out. They were really awesome to work with. So they've already done the artwork for issue two as two variant covers as well. Anybody interested in being doing a variant cover or being a cosplayer on the cover, hit me up. Okay, cool. Oh, also, so do you have like a end game for this? Like, is, is it going to end at like four issues or do, or like, is that just going to be volume one or, or anything like that? In my head, I'll say, and that's honestly honestly where I do most of my writing so because part of the we, we have a script but when I get into the pages like I'll think of things as I'm drawing it's like it's that's totally half of the creative process for me so in my head I haven't even bothered writing up until eight because I know it's gonna happen in my head but I have eight issues very sort of firmly blocked out for this story arc, but that's only one story arc. Okay. So we could, in, we could, you know, potentially indefinitely go. That's fine with me. It just depends on the success of the books, you know, <laughs> and how they do and how people like them. But I think they're really gonna like the first eight issues. I think they're pretty killer. I'm really looking forward to issue number three. I think that's my favorite. Yeah, it'll be ongoing. Awesome. So this is in this this could be an investment as well. Putting put going in on it. As far as investment, oh well, I think the future of comics is really in sort of indie, like creator focus. I won't say indies necessarily, but creator focus, like supporting the creator personally. I think that's really where comics is heading and has been heading for the first or for the last few years. So. As far as investment, I think think it would be, probably be a good investment for people because if this grows, so would I, and so would my books, and I've got lots of other titles too um, to come out with. So as opposed to supporting a bunch of publishers, if you really do like a creator, it's, it makes a big difference to support that creator directly. By all means, please get boobs number one. <laughs> And and you know what? On on top of that is that to me, I think that the best uh, the best creators are the ones that they can write and do art. Like because no one's more in sync than with this themselves. Because like I'm not an artist, so then it's like I have to go find somebody that is in sync with my idea, and that's hard. You know, to harder to come up with than hey, you're, it's all package deal right here. And so it just, it flows better. Everything just works better. It's just 
like I said, you're in sync and, and it works better. And and as to your point that you mentioned, I, I think that you are absolutely correct. I've seen it myself where I think people are getting, uh, they're getting inundated with all these events and it's just event after event. And they're like, I just want, please just finish a story arc with one, with this one character that I like, you know, they're like, can we just, before it gets interrupted with, with some event and some, some writers or some creators are good enough to go, I can work it into my story and make it work for me. But it's, I feel like it's really hard to, to do that. And it's really hard to make it work without somehow changing the event or whatever. But anyways, it, it just seems like people are going, this is too much. I, I just want to focus on my one or my few characters and, and get my character arc and get like a solid story. And they've shifted more to indie and then even seeing that and go like, well, th if this is what this is, then let's go deeper. And that's why people have gotten into Kickstarter so much and creators like yourself. Yeah, I agree. I used to be uh, like a big Batman fan. I, I've seen people drop off from from the big titles. I Now, I honestly, I'm bored of Batman. I never thought I'd say that because I do, I do love that universe. But yeah, I think you can only like stretch something out so long. Even the Harry Potter reboot, I haven't even read about all the like controversy. I don't even know what the controversy is that I just know they're doing a reboot. And I'm like, man, can't we ever just like let something die? Like that, it, didn't we all learn a long time ago that a good story usually ended up in like the death of a character or like, you know, a big climactic event and then it was over. So I do feel like, yeah, they're like really repurposing everything now and it's, it's getting old. There's no new ideas in Hollywood, I'm finding. So the, the indie creators do tend to have new ideas or good ideas. And it's not like Hollywood, you know, adopts them because Hollywood's like its own very elitist bubble that we're not a part of. I think some of the best ideas and some of the best really raw art uh, comes from just the creators. Like you said, that write and draw. What's his name? He's a fantastic artist. Stedjapon's, Stefan Stedjapik. I I can't pronounce it. Stefan <laughs> Sejik, I think. Yes, he makes uh, amazing, he does amazing work. And he, I think he's just, like he's been working so hard for years that almost has, uh, I think, affected his health in some ways. He talks about that. I don't follow him super, super closely, but like he's one that comes to my mind that has probably been at this for like 25 years. That started, I think, with Witchblade and Sylvester. And now he does like all his own stuff. And he says it's not even worth working for a publisher. He makes more money and he's happier doing all his own work. And he does all his own original ideas so i would like to be like that one day you know after boobs grows there's a, like at least six or seven other titles i can i can get into some are funny some are serious and that's how i want to be him in the future that's exactly what i want to get what i want to do that's funny that you mentioned that i was going to say like hey kind of your art kind of reminds me of his now that you mention it you know oh. I was like, yeah because <laughs> well, he cool. did he did that harleen series and once again that was like it was a series and it was going great and then it seems like they just cut him off and i'm like why did you do that he was doing so well but i, I think this is a great idea to to invest in i'm totally down for it awesome i think he'll enjoy it <laughs> i've done things with boobs that i've never <laughs> seen other people do <laughs> so <laughs> it's it's fun <laughs> i hope you enjoy it too thank you for having me i really appreciate it yeah it's been a pleasure thank you very much like i said you can check boobs issue one at kickstarter your socials are forward slash or at symbol just mindy wheeler art okay. wheeler like an 18 wheeler that's usually how people remember it since i'm a trucker <laughs> awesome <laughs> And uh, we're T TNTM the show almost everywhere. That's Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Tumblr, uh, YouTube, Gmail, our website, everything. Talk nerdy to me.